EV is a real-time render engine that I can say revolutionized how we work on our 3D projects in Blender and in this video I'm gonna tell you why. For a few years now, we have seen Blender go from a relatively unnoticed 3D software to one that has captured the hearts of many and evolved into one of the best in the business. But how was that even possible? I mean, after all, this quick ascension to glory was never seen before in the history books of the 3D industry. Well, a big part of that was thanks to Eevee, a revolutionary engine that completely changed the game and the destiny of this beloved software. But why is that the case? And what is the story behind it and these recent rumors surrounding the next-gen version of the engine? Eevee made its debut with the 2.8 release of Blender, a very popular version that made the software break into the 3D mainstream, thanks to a multitude of innovations, including of course the groundbreaking Eevee that was built using OpenGI, an application programming interface that provides us with a large set of functionalities to manipulate graphics and images. The story behind the engine was all started with Clement Foucault the main developer of Eevee, who at the time was a freelance 3D artist who was also developing the PBR viewport branch in his free time. And the good news is, his work didn't go unnoticed, because it caught the attention of the Blender Institute, who invited him to join the 2.8 team and integrate his work as part of this major release. In an interview with Blender Diplom, Clement shared a fascinating insight into how he got the idea. He explained that the PPR branch was the prequel to EV and the concept of integrating a real-time rendering technique into Blender all began during a project he did, where he found himself constantly switching between Blender and Marmoset Toolback 2 to preview the assets he was making. So one day, frustrated by all of this, he decided to give it a go and implement a solution directly into Blender. And the question now is, how good was that solution? And did it really work? Surprisingly enough, right upon its release, Eevee was a complete success that captured everyone's attention, in both the Blender community as well as the industry at large. And at the heart of this is its real-time rendering capabilities, which means we can instantly see our scenes in the viewport and render them instantly without any long loading times, just like in video games. But let's be honest, this alone wouldn't be enough, or would it? Now, let me take a moment and tell you about CSM AI. CSM AI is an awesome 3D generation AI platform which is able to generate fully animated 3D models and assets from any input in a matter of seconds, whether it be text prompts, images, or even sketches. This platform got you covered. In a nutshell, CSM allows you to create dynamic 3D models in no time, and these assets can be integrated into various mediums like video games, movies, or AR and VR applications, which opens the door for many possibilities for designers, artists, and even game developers. And you can just think of the implication of such a technology, where artists can jump from the concept to the animated model with a switch of a button. CSM actually provides also a new animation library as well as text-to-animation AI prompts where you can apply animations to your models, in addition to other features like the ability to create stylized characters, real-time sketch to 3D, and much more. Finally, when it comes to building worlds, CSM's AI world renderer can be used to rapidly prototype 3D worlds using meshes, animations, and dynamic 3D environments. So what are you waiting for? Check out CSM AI for free by following the link down in the description. Now back to the video. The great thing is how it mixes that with physically based rendering, a type of rendering that tries to copy how the light behaves and interacts with different surfaces in the real world so that it can produce realistic 3D scenes. Besides, the engine also supports screen space reflections, which is a technique that is partially used in real-time render engines to simulate reflections on surfaces such as water, mirrors, and shiny materials. Eevee is also capable of generating shadows for objects in a scene, 
including soft shadows and the ability to adjust the quality of resolution and these are just some of the things that the engine can do because this is a general idea behind it and only the main attribute that made it popular in the first place. Before EV came along, there were many other 3D software with varying levels of real-time rendering capabilities, but nothing really hit the mark the way EV did, or even came close to it. Sure, software such as Unreal Engine 4 and Unity were already well known for their strong real-time rendering, which some might argue are even more powerful than EV. However, they were mainly designed for gaming, and the concept of using them for other purposes wasn't really widely accepted like it is accepted today. Now, in the context of digital content creation software, or DCC software as they call them, such as Cinema 4D, Max or Maya, the story is quite different. While some of them had basic real-time preview options, they often lack the advanced features and speed that a dedicated real-time engine offers. And it was only after the release of Eevee that we were introduced to something entirely different and we saw a raising of the bar in the market that simply wasn't there before or almost not there. Let's take the case of Maya for example, a software that has long been a favorite in industries like film, television or animation and it is capable of offering high quality rendering with advanced lighting and material effects thanks to engines such as Arnold, Octane, or V-Ray. However, the real-time rendering capabilities were not a strong suit of these engines, other than some previewing capabilities at best, with the interactive photorealistic rendering of Maya. On a side note, it is important to mention that there were still a few niche engines, such as Keyshot, which is a great real-time rendering engine, especially designed for product designers to showcase their products, but it can also be used for other purposes. The point is, its real-time capabilities were great for a long time. The release of Eevee back in 2019 was met with a lot of enthusiasm from the 3D industry, because it was a game-changer for both artists and studios and offers a more dynamic workflow and makes the experience less tedious. In terms of influence on the industry, I don't know how big it was, but I feel like ever since the introduction of Eevee, we started seeing a shift towards real-time rendering in the industry and changing how 3D content is created and consumed, especially in popular 3D software such as Max, Maya, and Cinema 4D. Maybe this was a start of a butterfly effect, or maybe it wasn't related, but we can't deny that real-time rendering is becoming the thing nowadays. If anything, we can see the effect taking place with other 3D software users, because 3D artists from other software started desiring a similar engine. Just like this Maya user said, seeing the real-time rendering capabilities in Blender, I am painfully trying to transition away from Maya. The only reason I'm still using Maya is because I know it inside and out. If we look at it from the user's point of view, Eevee played a massive role in Blender's meteoric rise to popularity, and its impact cannot be denied. Now, this is just my two cents, but I believe a big part of this is how Eevee made the software attractive to many artists who were once just hobbyists, and as you know, these folks don't usually use expensive or fancy hardware. Eevee allowed beginners for the first time to enjoy an efficient solution to start creating 3D scenes without draining their wallets. And it did this by providing two distinct workflows. The first one is directly rendering in Eevee for quick results. And in the second one, you can use Eevee as a preview tool and then switch to cycles for a more realistic final render if your computer can't handle it. Because this can save you a lot of time, in addition to the pain of having to wait for hours when it comes to cycles renders, only to realize you needed to make edits at the end, which can waste a lot of time. At the time, achieving this feat was a big deal, and the fact that it could all be done within the same software was incredibly appealing to many users. However, the party was cut short. But why is that? In today's context, we could say that Eevee no longer has a really big competitive advantage, and what was once impressive about it is no longer a feat in today's environment. Let me explain. 
You see, with the emergence and the advancement of real-time rendering solutions such as Unreal Engine and D5 Render for example, the norms have changed. And EV now finds itself just another player in the game of real-time rendering. And to some extent, in the shadow of these giants. Because they have addressed the limitations of EV by supporting indirect lighting and redefining what was possible with physically based rendering and dynamic lighting as well as handling large scenes better. But does that mean that EV is not getting better? Well, the good news is that the Blender Foundation didn't leave that question unanswered because towards the end of last year, during one of the regular live streams of the Blender's channel, the surprise of many, EVNX was unveiled to the public for the first time. And it will be a complete overhaul of the engine that comprises an enhanced shadow resolution, a fully revamped baking system, and virtually no limitations on the number of lights in a scene, among many other features. However, unfortunately, according to Jerome Becker, EVNX had some performance issues, and it was postponed until July 2024, instead of shipping it half ready. However, while I don't think it will be ready to compete with existing real-time alternatives from the get-go at least, EV Next will inject a much-needed breath of air into the engine. And when we combine it with Blender's other features, things are once again looking bright for EV. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.